We're going live on the tube. Greetings and salutations. We live on the tube. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah. Welcome me back. Market yeah, closed. Yeah, yeah. Guess we're open though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guessed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's us. Yeah, 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 that's us. Yeah, in a major way, in a major way. Hope everybody's having a historical Black History Month. Yeah, yeah, shout out to everybody that uh, recognized, yesterday was Valentine's Day, but yesterday was Frederick Douglass' birthday. So we gotta pay homage to that. Most importantly. Most importantly, right? Most importantly, RIP. Shout out to everybody that's making history right now. Everybody that's tuned in. Ernest, what's up? Yeah, oh, y'all flooded here today. Right away. Let's do the it. The timer has gone Let's off. Let's do it. Let's do the it. The timer has gone off, Swalls. <laughs> nah, they ready, man. Let's get it popping. It's not every day, man. You know, most legendary platform, give you the legendary content, give you the most legendary situations in history. It's world history right here. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. We're going to get this show started. First and foremost, rest in peace to Notorious B.I.G. Shout out to DMX. We'll explain that later on. Yeah, we're going to get to that later. Bro, I see you. I see you, Ian. I'm getting you in there. The late great big, man. We miss you. Let's get it going. Okay, guys, greetings and salutations. We're, gonna, we're not gonna waste any time with this situation. We're gonna get the ball rolling right away. So first we wanna give you the rundown of, of Ernie Elysia this week. We have none other than the incomparable Inky Johnson. Wow, that dude is unbelievable, man. Shout out to the good brother. Um, he is our guest tomorrow on episode 121. Time flies, crazy. Um, make sure that you are subscribed to EYL podcast also because on Friday we do study hall and on Sunday we do um, cliff notes. So make sure you check that out. Market Mondays, the biggest in the game. Make sure you subscribe to Market Mondays on all podcast outlets and um, tell a friend to tell a friend. This Wednesday for EYL University, me, Troy, and the whole gang um, over, at, over at Earn Your Leisure are doing our first um, investment call with everybody. We're going to go over everything that, you know, we got in our portfolios and kind of break stuff down like that. We talked about that before. It's going to be the first one. And we got a big surprise for open enrollment next week. Um, Let's do it, man. I'm ready. I don't even want to waste any time, man. Yeah, I'm trying like, to get them in. They won't let them in. They won't let Ian in? Yeah, they're trying Why to not? lock them at the door. Look. Damn. The chats. I can't see the chat. Okay, we get the chats. The chat, nah, the chat's back in. I don't know what's up with the chat. YouTube like stops it for like the first four minutes now. I don't know what's going on with that. But um, yeah, let's get them in here. In the meantime, I'm gonna put the link to EYL University, the biggest school online. Um, It's not an investment club, it's a school. Highly discounted. Hey, bro, Ian. you there? Ian. Yeah, here you go. Uh-oh. I thought he was gonna miss it. <laughs> I thought he was gonna miss it. He said, I yeah. shout so much, I don't need a stylist. We got the pink on today. What's going on? What's going on, family? How you guys doing? I'm like, Zoom, not today, not today. Not today. <laughs> Happy Monday, hey, everybody, yo. Happy, everybody on YouTube, Red Panda family, what's going on? What's really going on? I heard y'all got snow out there, bro. All my people <laughs> in Houston and Dallas, be safe. It is no joke. It is no that's joke. No joke. I said 15 degrees. Houston? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That's different. Don't like it. Not my favorite. Ian, um, should we get right to it, bro? I said, we said what we had to say. You wanted to say your- Yeah, let's do the disclaimer real quick and let's get this going. All right, so number one, y'all know how this works. Do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It is very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently advised from- Advice from uh, a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and what to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message from the good folks at Earn Your Leisure and the good brother Ian Dunlap, the master investor. 
All right. I appreciate Floor. it. Allow me to share. We get to it and let Mark grace us with his brilliance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get it popping. Floor is yours. You guys so much. M, M Cheeto Mortgage Guy. Legend. Perfect. Let me know if you guys can uh, see my screen and I'll, I'll proceed. Yep, we see you. Perfect. So the purpose of the night, I want to get right to it. <clears throat> I want you to walk away tonight and never need anything else. So I want to give you the complete blueprint. So the intent of Market Mondays was to, in real time, tell you how to invest. And week by week, we gave you the blueprint for what to do. But I want to put it all here in one sample size for you so you can walk away and never have to worry about what to do again. So get your phones out, get your notes out, and let's go. So we're sponsored by the Stock Club, of course. Come and join us. Uh, we'll have our, our monthly meeting um, tomorrow, and we'll start the daily sessions tomorrow as well. Thank you guys for being supportive of the Stock Club. And then, of course, you guys are going to get your 25 bonus picks as well uh, tomorrow. I love you guys. Let's get it right into it. Everyone always asks me, Ian, where do I get into the market? And I think episode 14, we covered this. So <clears throat> for those of you who have been faithfuls, uh, put channel in the chat if you've, if you've seen us cover this. But I want to give you three ways to get into the market. Number one is the 200-day moving average. Number two, the 72-day moving average. And number three, the price channel. The price channel. If I have to rank the importance of it, I would do price channel first, 72 day moving average second, 200 day third. Number two, where do we get out of the market? You wanna get out at a five year mark. Please put in chat, time in the market is the most important indicator. So five years, 10 years are the first two targets you should have if you have quality. If you're not willing to hold it for five years or 10 years, you know it is trash. Nikola, GameStop, AMC, et cetera, right? We talked about Fibonacci retracements on episode 20. Write this down. Go to episode 20 if you have not heard us talk about it. You can use the 125% extension to know when to exit out of your trade. So if a company breaks out of its all-time high, when it gets to 125% or 25% over its all-time high, you can exit at that part. Number four. 5X your initial in, uh, entry. So if you're in a tech-based company or biotech or a high growth company, you can set a limit order for, let's say your entry is hundred bucks. You can set your limit order for 500 to exit you out. Of course, trading has considerable risks. There's no guarantee that it will go to that mark based on a company and evaluation and the fundamentals of that company. But 5X is your secondary target. Okay, when to short, please write this down. If it's a grade F stock with poor fundamentals, number one. Number two, if the price is 500 or 100, excuse me, 50 or 140 bucks over the top of the market, that's a good sign for it to short if it's not a great company. So Hertz, Nikola, AMC, GameStop, companies with no proper fundamental, excuse me, fundamentals, weak revenue, and all of a sudden they pop up 140 bucks, 220 bucks, if you give it nine to 19 weeks, please write that down. Nine to 19 weeks. That will allow you to establish a short position if the company is no good. Number four, I always call it here. So if a company is not good, I'll be sure to mention it. And number five, when the fundamentals do not match, it is a value trap. I don't want to see us get hurt and devastated by these companies that are not any good because they were hyped up on boards and discords and things of that nature. Okay how to evaluate a company. We talked about this before. So once you get through your technicals, let's go through fundamentals. And we, we covered some of this before, but how to evaluate a company, the founder, the character of the founder and the team, the vision, the number one thing that they can do that no one else in the world can do. That is key. Please write that down. Number six, when you are investing in the company, what is their unbreakable competitive advantage? Bitcoin being added to Tesla since they were pre-revenue is a, com a competitive advantage for them right now. Apple having an extensive moat is a competitive advantage. Whatever company you love right now, please put what the competitive advantage is of that asset or company. How much cash do they have on hand? I'll skip down to number 12. Cash flow premium or consistent cash flow. 
There is a reason that monthly recurring and annual recurring amongst software companies are so popular, right? Number 13, which business are they number one in or at least top three and they have a superior customer experience? So go down this list and I need you to check off each box before you consider investing in it. Now for defense, it's great to have a company that can change the world, but what if 93 other companies and they get, you know, let's say Mark Cuban invests in 10 of them and Damon John invests in another 10 and Chris Sock invests in another 10, they may come and eat that startup's lunch. These economic moats matter. One, low cost of production, high switching costs, network effect. We talked about this last week as well, number eight. Do they have a legal monopoly? Companies like Stryker, companies like Pool, I could argue have a legal monopoly where they virtually have no competition in their space. Brand loyalty is key and also the value of the brand. And hopefully we get a chance to ask Mark about how he built the Dallas Mavericks brand up to be worth what it is. This is a very key fundamental part that I have not talked about before, but I'll talk about next week. You need to focus your intention on investing in conglomerates. So which company is this? They are involved in tech, software, hardware, currently healthcare, fintech, electronic vehicles, consumer, and space exploration. If I brought this company to you and I told you they were cash flow positive and they had considerable market share and mind share in their category, you'd be like, this is a home run. That company is Apple. Amazon is in the space. You can argue that Tesla is a conglomerate as well in the making. You want to invest in conglomerates. IBM once was, and then it's lost its position and it's holding in the market. Next one, three most important indicators. Number one is the grandfather of them all, quantitative easing. We would not have all these companies rising to record levels and all these record level SPACs, kudos to Josh, that are returning 500 and 800% without quantitative easing. Inverted yield curve tells you ahead of time when a crash is going to happen. I tell you guys every week, don't worry about crash. If that axis ever gets crossed, and the inverted yield curve does break, you have 18 to 36 months to begin preparing where you want to get in the market and prepare in advance. You have to prepare when everyone else is happy. So when disaster is on your door, you are not panicking. And number three, the only time frame that guarantees that you will win in the market is if you hold your assets for 20 years. And I know many of you don't wanna hear it. Truth be told, a lot of you are losing more money than you care to admit because you will not hold a position long enough for it to be fruitful for you. This is key for that's, your personal that's a life. Gym. That's a gym, don't let that go over your head. If I'm looking at a person and I'm comparing and I say, okay, let's say I'm going against Mark. He's gonna eat me for lunch, right? But if I'm only willing to hold my position for a year, it does not matter how many exotic strategies and derivatives I put in, inside of it to outperform him. If he will wait 20 years, he's gonna outperform me because no man can beat time. It is the biggest lever that we have in our favor. And I know some of us are starting late, but this is where the freedom satellite kicks in. Please write this down. There is no freedom financially without you tying yourself to a business. I talked about it with Ace Hood a couple of weeks ago, kudos to Khaled. But one thing, artists, I need you guys to realize, if you do not invest in a company to get equity in it, you don't own it. Everyone's freedom is going to be tied to a business. So this is a matrix that you have to follow top to bottom. Business, stocks, real estate, life insurance, a job or two. There's nothing wrong with working because most entrepreneurs make less than $33,000 a year. So for those of you that have good careers, kudos to you. Okay? You want at least four revenue streams in your business to start. Ideally, you want 24. And these last two are very key because it doesn't matter how much you make. Risk mitigation. So insurance is key. And then you need protection of your assets. Please type in chat tonight, what kind of business do you want to start that will give you security for yourself and your family? My personal research blueprint, I mark off the buy zones for the top 500 companies that I'm interested in. So do your own research. If you love Neo or whatever company, which we call it here at 221, 
I need you to go through the 500 companies that you like the most, because guess what happens? The next correction or pullback may not be COVID related. It may be student loan bubble related. Now you need to then look at the assets that will have the greatest drop from 70 to 83%. And then you have to say, well, maybe Chegg will be incredibly valuable because now Mm -hmm. if the student loan bubble pops, now everyone is really going to have to go online in combination with the pre-existing recession that was caused by COVID. And let's be very honest, the jobs from 2008 have not been recovered. We're going to a digital world. I think Salesforce announced that they're going to allow the people to work remotely forever. Mm -hmm. Yep. World is changing. And then for me, I'm going through the top 36 futures seven days a week and looking at the patterns. We talked about it last week. All markets are correlated in some way. This is not the 1940s. So there is not separation of markets anymore. They're all entangled together. We talked about the futures market. I first must say trading has considerable risk. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Please consult your advisor. You should not invest in futures unless you are well capitalized, right? But an easy strategy is to take 33 contracts, aim for 21 ticks, that will put you at 21,625. Most traders would do a lot better if your thesis is to take 20 trades per year. The brokers know that you're going to overtrade. And I was talking to my guys about this earlier. I would rather win five or six trades in a quarter and have a reputation for constantly winning opposed to be on the trader's roller coaster where I'm like, dear heavenly father, please, I swear if I... You give me one more trade, I will never mess up again. And what do we do as traders? We mess up right again after, right? Limit the number of trades. If you can stick between 18 and 20 for the year, you can knock it out of the park. Sounds like Six a rela- sounds like a bad re- sounds like a bad relationship. Listen, uh, tra- traders love toxic environments and abusive relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Justin LeBoy. They love it. <laughs> yeah, they, they are the ones that get beat up by the market get abused, get margin called, and then run back. But the brokers know that because whenever you have a loss in the market, guess what you're going to do? You're going to recapitalize your account. And then on top of that, what are you going to do? Trade more so I can get even. Dear Heavenly Father of Nazareth, please let me get one more trade. And if I get to break even, I swear (laughs) God, I'll never take another trade. You get to break even and plus, and what happened? I am the greatest thing ever. David Tapper, who? Chris, (laughs) Great. Let me call the homies up. (laughs) Hey. Silver Lake Capital, who I'm the new I'm the new king. <laughs> and then nine trades later, what happens? I'm sorry, you need to recapitalize your account because you went over your margin and you were in the same situation that Vlad was in. So from a macro level, you guys need to go look at the all-time chart since inception, like we talked about on episode 70. The VIX levels, if you look, 155, 137.64, 90.68 and 82.6 are the, oh my God, I can't not believe we are here volatility levels. Mm-hmm. Anytime the market gets there, th- so your homework for tonight is go read every article that you can find on Sir John Templeton. The recession blueprint is easy to make and follow because it's been laid before. It's hard to execute, however. Sir John Templeton bought companies and stocks pennies on the dollar and waited years and became one of the richest men. When these VIX levels hit, guess what's going to happen? Your heart is going to drop to your stomach and your stomach <laughs> is going to drop to your bottom. But if you've marked off these levels in advance, you're going to say, well, Apple is probably a good acquisition here. Tesla is a good acquisition here. Maybe Microsoft and Adobe here. If I want a small dividend, McDonald's here. For my uh, real estate people and those of you that are contractors, Home Depot and Lowe's, yes, we will have a 24 to 36 month low, but things are not going that well. But in four years, the economy will be back up and now you will be rich because you have been able to wait. These are the VIX levels that are key. If we break above 82 while the world is panicking, I want you to begin collecting these companies for pennies on a dollar. These are the sites to do your research. One of my favorites. Guru focus. I have no financial relationship with any of these. Macro trends is two. Macro trends will be able to show you the historical returns of a company based on its splits and do some incredible research if you want to compare, do a comparative analysis on companies to see which ones are better. 
The one of the things I will have you do on macro trends, I want you to put in two companies, compare their revenue, and the one with the highest revenue you probably should lean into if they are tech-based. Number three, Y charts. A little bit pricey. I'll do a breakdown on here next week for how to use it. And for those of you in the stock club, we're going to start using Y charts um, to do our fundamental analysis. And fourth is portfolio visualizer. So let's say you have a thesis that you think these eight companies can change the world. And if they've been publicly traded for the last four years, you can put them in a collection, pick your allocation, and you can see what the potential returns could be before you invest your actual money. So think of it as paper trading with a portfolio, but having the benefit of being able to execute the trade live later in your own account. And this is a key perspective. I need to drill this home. Your inability to hold for long-term is your greatest risk to your financial freedom. No one makes an incredible business and then so my mom called me and said, hey, did you ever see the story about the McDonald's brothers? And then Ray Kroc came in and bought it and acquired it and he took it state to state. I said, yeah, the McDonald's brothers sold that business, what, for 2.73 million? That was a lot of money back then. But look at the upside of what they missed out on and their family missed out on being short-sighted. Being short-sighted. And I said this when we did our crossover episode with uh, Mike, Josh, and Ben, technical analysis is just a visual representation of fundamentals and their place on the screen. A shitty company is a shitty company. I don't care what RSI you pair with it, what moving average it is. No if you go out far matter. enough and you look at the 20, it does not matter. There's no group of traders. If we get 26,000 traders and we try and lift up a company that's negative net revenue, for 19 years, we may be able to float it up for nine days, but in a year will not be higher. I wanna walk you through some of the companies that I've called and these are still some good investments. So let's write these down. If you need a scholarship, here we go. Apple, Microsoft, AMD, kudos to Deborah who's been in since 14. Carvana, Disney at 100, Boeing at 91, exit at 252.46 if you're in Boeing, please. VOO, VTI, MGC, Mercado Libre, Super Sleeper, Amazon of South America, XLK in April, Shopify at 363, it is now at 1455.49. There's a cloud company called 59 at 5973, we called. It's now at 181. Neo at $2.21 and at 12 is now at 59 bucks. Plug at 21, Striker, Legal Monopoly, Moderna, 26 bucks and 89 cents is now is at 183. Pool. And then short AMC, GameStop, Nicola Hurts, poor Leroy. He's still in the hospital recovering from the damage. That that's just, that's just, that's just a few. That's just a few. That's just a few. Let, let that's alone a few. IBV, let, let alone I buy, let alone Hero. And XBI. Let alone. <laughs> Don't forget my draft game. So, so that's <laughs> so that. Oh, wait. It's a sample size. That's free, that's free game. How many stocks? And I'll can say we this. Give? Yep. But here's the thing. None of this matters if you don't execute. None Talk of it. Him. In a couple of weeks, kudos to the queen. Lauren Simmons will be here to talk to us about our psychological attachment with money. And she told me today, one of the biggest reasons that people don't perform well is because of the pre-existing relationship that they have with money. And sometimes people are just investing for excitement. She was supposed to be our first guest. Kudos to the queen and our guests that are coming next week. But none of this matters if you do not execute. You are worthy of freedom, happiness, love for you and your family. And I know historically, man, we've had some trauma with money and experiences and breakthroughs, but we can be the generation that breaks that if we execute collectively. And here's the great thing. Troy says this all the time. He's like, man, I'm you from where I'm from. All of you that are watching, you can be you and your family, your neighborhood. Kudos to everybody back in East, East Chicago. Twan, I see you like five years ago. I didn't see this many people investing. And it's amazing that you guys have grabbed this bottle of balls and be like, yes, we're going to get this. Please execute. Even if you don't like the companies that I call, use the same thesis and same formula, which is my actual investing formula, to pick the companies that you like, whether it's crypto or penny stocks or whatever the case. Okay. I need you to put in chat, what is your freedom number? What is the number that you're trying to secure for yourself and your family? And I need to ask you this. Are the steps that you're currently taking now going to get you there? And are you closer now 
than when you began. Here's the truth about financial freedom. No one person can save you. Only you can save you by your choices and decisions. I can give you 73,000 books to read and all the technical and fundamental analysis and tell you all the stories. If you don't hit the buy button and hold it in your Vanguard, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, it does not matter. I don't want you to be here for your entertainment. And I understand. I had a friend that worked at a firm who made millions and he called me and told me what to invest in and I didn't listen. So I get if it's your first year. This is scary as hell initially. But as a community, if we invest in these things together and we invest in safe companies, we can see the results that are possible. And that's why we are here every week to help guide you to your freedom and give you this personal blueprint. So what is coming next? Of course, we have the amazing, the greatest entrepreneur to ever walk Bloomington's campus, Mark Cuban. But next week, we're going to start breaking down every company in the S&P 500, every company in the Russell 2000. And before the year is over, I want to go through every company in NASDAQ for you guys. We're also going to get back to letting you break guidelines. And I'm going to let you ask about the companies that you're worried about. And if they're good, I'll give some prices. My last words to you, execute, be kind, be loving, and only follow the plan that will help you and your family. Even with me, I don't want you to learn so much from me that you say, man, I love Market Mondays, man, in 2020, 2021, now it's 2029. And I say, well, how's the family doing off the investment advice? Man, I never invested. That would hurt my soul. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to help you get freedom and give you the blueprint that I wish that I had when I first got into investing and no one would share the information with me. I love you guys over and out. And let's welcome our esteemed guest, the legendary Mark Cuban. Outstanding performance. Outstanding. Outstanding performance. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up the VIX um, because I, I believe like maybe two or three months ago, um, we had spoke about what levels do you like to get it at, right? And some people, when you put up 170 or 152, they were like, wait, I didn't even know it went that high, but it does. Um, even in, in March when Corona hit, we saw it go up to like 70 something, but it hit a, at a number. And, and we, we said this earlier, like what would be a, a point where it's like, all right, I feel comfortable investing. And we said anywhere under 20. And so the VIX has yep. hit 19. And then when VIX slides back down to either $5 and 25 cent or $4.83. Oh, baby. That's when you'll start to see the pullback happen. Once again, I want you guys to stop worrying about a pullback. Stop worrying about the pullback. For my seasoned investors, I love that you guys are laughing when kids are now asking you, we're going to crash. A 10% or 18% drop is not a crash. It is a normal pullback when we are overextended anyway. That's a fact. That's a fact. I think people have been spoiled by this market for too long. And any sign of a pullback, they're like running for the hills. Like it's like doomsday scenario. Prepare for it now, however. Prepare now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and on top of the VIX, I, I know you recommend the fair and green index. I know that has been moving. I, I, most people, they forget to check on it. We learned a valuable lesson in, in September, at the early September. We forgot to stick to the script. Check these things. Check your VIX. You check to. your fear and green. Use those indicators because they can help you. It could save it. Well, Personally, we're gonna speak for us, but could have saved us some money um, had we just remembered those indicators and stuck to our script of following them. Block out the noise. This is my personal blueprint, by the way. Block out the noise. And the person, here's a good lesson too. The person who puts in the most chart time and talks to Lisa is gonna win. Don't think I got these, these jackets from Walmart and, and, and Target and TJ Maxx just from talking. Like I am a gym rat when it comes to the actual investing part. Please dig in deep. If you put in two or three hours a day, and I was least likely to get this down. But by me putting in hours every single day for years, it became uh, relative, relatively easy after about four or five years. Yeah, this is the step-by-step guide. Uh, one sec. No, 19 on the VIX is not a buy. 19 on the VIX is not a buy. If VIX goes to the higher levels that I mentioned today, that's when you want to start looking for assets to collect. VIX is a measure of volatility, which means there is uncertainty in the market. During times of uncertainty, there's going to be price dispersions, and you're going to be able to get some things that you want on sale. 
There you have it. Mark Cuban is in the building. He he is trying to raise his hand. I'm, I'm communicating. It's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm emailing. I'm actually, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I'm emailing Mark Cuban right now. We going back and forth. He's like, yo, I'm in here. I raised my hand. I'm trying to, we're trying to locate Zoom, him. Zoom. Yeah, we're trying to locate him. Indiana University <laughs> family, come on. That, that's, that's not him. If if you are not Mark Cuban in the Zoom, please raise, please lower your hand. Please. Hand, please. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm dead serious. For real, we can't. Nah, nah, I'm dead serious. Put, everybody, put your hand. Down. Could you do us a favor if you're not Mark Cuban, please lower your hand. Please, thank you. Please. Terrell, Wanda, Julian, please lower your hand. Cassandra, thank you. We love you. There's too many hand raised. I can't. I can't. Yeah. We can't see what's going on. And we use the blueprint. Execute. You have everything that you need inside of you. You don't need anyone's counsel, insight, and advice. But the measuring stick always has to be is what you're doing. Is it getting you closer to your freedom destination? That's all that matters. That is all that matters. Ian. Yes. Doge, your Dogecoin prediction came true. What happened there, sir? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Inform me. I hadn't looked. Nah, it took it took a dip. Don't scare me. Up. Maybe, just maybe. Me looking at this 12, 13 hours a day has a considerable advantage. But even with that. Mark off your buy zones for crypto if you guys are into it. Go tell your friends and family if we get to 15, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a great time. And even in the case of crypto, the, the use case of holding for 10 years. If you go look at uh, probably from 2011 to, to now, over a 10 year period, there's not many assets that have outpaced Bitcoin. No. I know they was like, nah. Who I know. You don't know who I know. These guys are capping. You they don't, don't know that know guy. No, of course we, we know that guy. Come on, baby. I was like, of course we know that guy. Good. Who, 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 who is yours, baby? Come on, Tita <laughs> Rab, how you doing? <laughs> The legend has arrived. The legend himself in the building. I would have sent some mother bears to you, but it's, it's freezing out there. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. You no, know, I don't even know if I'm going to have uh, electricity this whole time. So let's get going. Let's go. Oh, yeah. yeah the yeah. power I'm, keeps I'm, on going out. And yes, you I got, You guys got to bliss it. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's get right to it. Mark Cuban, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you, we're not going to give an introduction. <laughs> the legend himself. Go 10, listen to the episode. 10,000 10, people. Biggest, biggest investment show. You know, this is the biggest investment show in the world. So for Mark Cuban, this is, this is an honor. Surprised. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. That's a fact. I appreciate that. Mark, Mark, I'm going to start off. I'm going to start off because I don't want to waste any time. I don't waste any of your precious time. So I was watching some clips. You was on CNBC um, a couple of weeks ago when you, um, that whole GameStop situation. And you was talking about how um, it's really changed. Like, and it, like, it's how you view stock. Nobody really is investing to have ownership in a company. They're really investing just to have it to sell to somebody else. So the whole idea of you buying stocks to actually own a company is kind of a false it's narrative. Old, so it's old and over unless you're Warren Buffett and me or me and buying, you know, a 1% and being activists or 10%, you know, but if you're buying 10 shares or you're buying a fractional share on, on Robinhood or whatever, you, you don't own the company. You're just buying something you hope goes up in price. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Now, that's not the way it always used to be. You know, back in the before 1982, if you didn't pay a dividend, you weren't going to get anybody to buy your stock. And the dividend um, rate was higher than the interest rates, you, more than you can get from a bank because it was riskier than a bank. And then in 1982, um, before 1982, stock buybacks were illegal. You could not do them. They were considered manipulated in the market. And then after that, companies made all these excuses. Well, I'll just buy back stock. That's reducing the share count. But that's a lie, right? Because on one hand, they're buying back shares of stock. On the other hand, 
they're issuing more shares of stock to their executives. And so you're not, you know, even that financial engineering is, is kind of a lie. And so it's all changed now. And I going back 15, 16 years, I wrote an article that if, if I put a baseball card on my desk and I put a stock certificate on my desk of a company that did not pay a dividend in 15 years, we didn't know which one is going to be worth more money, right? It's just whatever somebody will pay for it. And you, you know, if you bought, you know, a good company and then you bought a Michael Jordan rookie card over the last couple of months, that Michael Jordan rookie card is doing better. Yeah. And if you're into digital collectibles, NFTs and stuff like that, and I'm happy to talk uh, about all that stuff because I'm yeah, really yeah, getting yeah. into it. We're going there. Yeah, then then you're really, you know, crushing it. And so it's just a different game. Not many people so, know. Got it. Uh, yeah, not many, not many people know. Um, you also ran a hedge fund. If you were investing in the market right now, what would your thesis be and what would your strategy be right now in the market to not only get great gains, but also mitigate risk? Yeah, my, my thesis right now is I'm only investing in companies that are great at artificial intelligence, period, end of story. So if you look at the biggest market cap companies, start at the top, you know, Apple, Amazon, um, Google, um, Netflix is further down, but any of them, right, that are up there, the one thing they all have in common is they are great at artificial intelligence. And that's important because AI is hard. Yeah. It's expensive and it's hard and it takes years to get right. And so you look at these companies, Facebook or whoever, and you say, how the hell do they keep on growing and how the hell do they keep on making money? Because it doesn't seem intuitive at some level, right? But then when you think about artificial intelligence, you start realizing AI isn't about creating new products. It's about tweaking all the things underneath you know, the water that makes you more profitable and more efficient. How do you price things? You know, Amazon and Walmart and these big companies use AI to pick the exact right price for you, right? Look at Netflix, right? It's crazy. Like if I look at Netflix um, for my son's um, account and he's 11, the pictures for the same movie are different, mm -hmm. right? Because they figured out he's a kid and they figured out they're better to put pictures of sports figures or attractive women or whatever for my account, you know, because I'm more likely to, to click on it. And so that type of thing for artificial intelligence, it's not necessarily obvious, but it makes all the difference in the world. And a lot of people, particularly if you, you know, if you're an entrepreneur or you invest in smaller companies, a lot of people talk about AI. 99.99% of it is BS yeah. because when they talk about it, they don't really understand it or know what's going on. And so that's my investment thesis, you know, Maybe there's an exception every now and then, like I own some Las Vegas um, Sands Corporation because I think the snapback in Vegas, you know, as, as we get back to normal is going to be unreal. You think it'll take what, five or six years? What's that? You think it'll take what, five or six years? No, five or six months. People are going to be getting vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> man. You get your vaccination, you get your second vac vaccination, you do your two weeks before all of it kicks in, all the protection kit kicks in. What's the first thing you're doing? You're going to Vegas to get totally <laughs> more bottles. Good point. Yeah, yeah bottle Good point. for you know, everybody. And, you know, so that's why I bought that stock. But, and even then, they're really good with technology and figuring all this stuff out. But, um, yeah, so that, that's my thesis. I, I also uh, bought the Russell 2000 index, the IWM, but I bought that a long time ago um, yeah. simply because I knew that at some point, you know, the money would get there. Um, but other than that, it's just, you know, Netflix and Amazon are basically my, my core holdings. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I was just going to say, you believe in the AI, which is why Amazon, Netflix is your largest holdings. Exactly. Um, but I, I, I want to talk about something that you have a, a, a great knowledge about, and that's the early internet. Yep. And recently you, you compared blockchain to the early internet. So yeah. I want to talk about that a little bit. Are, are you saying, obviously there's a lot of coins and there was a lot of dot coms and a lot of websites. Some will fizzle out and some will rise to the top. I want to know your thoughts in, in that comparison. Sure. So in the early days of the internet, like back in late 94, early 95, we're sitting around with my buddy who went to Indiana and we're like, mm -hmm. we got to use this internet thing to be able to listen to Indiana basketball. Because mm -hmm. back then, back in the day, in order for us to listen to IU um, basketball in Dallas, I had to get somebody in Bloomington to put a radio next to a speakerphone. And then we would put the speakerphone on our desk in Dallas, have a six pack or 12 pack or case of beer and sit there and listen to the Hoosiers, right? 
And, you know, that was the way we did it. Now all of a sudden the internet comes along and you start realizing that having everything connected allowed us to change how things were done, right? So back then when I started talking about internet broadcasting and say, look, we're going to be able to listen to basketball from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world or any sporting event, any TV, any radio, any music, anywhere in the world. And people would say, well, dude, just turn on the TV, you know, just turn on the radio. Why are you doing all this stuff? And back then it was hard because you had to download all this software and have a modem just to get, just to be able to listen to streaming. And I was like, no, you don't understand. It's just going to get easier and easier and easier and easier. And it's going to get to the point where everybody's using this and there's going to be a zillion other applications, whether it's eBay, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Google search engines, whatever. And so here we are, fast forward 25 years, 26 years and the blockchain, right? Blockchain has been around for more than 10 years, <clears throat> but what, what really changed came along with Ethereum in particular and with Ethereum, you've got smart contracts. Mm -hmm. And with smart contracts, you can start creating all these new types of applications. You have distributed finance, which is incredible, right? Excuse me, you've got non-fungible tokens and the ability to sell digital collectibles, which is incredible. And now there's competitive blockchains that are popping up and new applications, but the blockchain and these smart contracts and the ability to code at different layers on top of them are creating all these new applications. And so, you know, like baseball cards, trading cards versus digital collectibles, right? Like NBA top shots or other things, right? Used to be, wait, where's my, my John Brisker card. I grew up in Pittsburgh. John Brisker played for the Pittsburgh Condors in the ABA. I love this card. Mwah. But at the same time, I got to deal with making sure I don't screw up the corners. I got to make sure I keep it in good shape. If I want to sell it, I don't really know what the, how to grade it. I don't know what the price is. There's no real you know, fluid marketplace. And then once I agree, I got to package it and ship it and send it and hope they get it, right? But the, right now, it's not like I show this to everybody, even though I'm, I'm proud of it. But you know, it's really just pride of ownership. Yeah. Digital collectibles, and it's not even the picture, right? You can get this picture of John Brisker and nobody even knows who the hell he is, but I love him. You, know, you can get this picture of John Brisker anywhere on the net. Digital collectibles, you got that same sense of ownership. But when it comes time to sell, right, or to buy, there's a marketplace where you know the price. You click one button and you own it immediately. You just pay however much is paid and you don't have to worry about shipping in or anything. Just bam, you own it. And that for particularly for Gen Z, you know, for Gen Z, your most the most valuable things you own after a house, a car, and maybe the, your clothes and shoes are digital, right? I mean, everything that's important is digital, and it's on your phone, and you're used to buying stuff. And so this whole market for NFTs, digital collectibles, is, I think, going to explode, and it's starting to explode right now. And to me, the digital version to collect is more efficient and better and a better place to invest in than the physical version because you don't have all the hassles. Is cybersecurity going to be even more important as a result? Cybersecurity is always important, right? Because if somebody's good enough to hack, they're going to hack everything that they can, right? So when I was talking to a guy who runs a big company who said the same thing. He's like, well, my friends don't buy Bitcoin because they're afraid it's going to get hacked. Let me just tell you something. If you're capable of hacking Bitcoin, which hasn't been hacked in all these years, you're not going after Bitcoin, which has a $900 billion market cap. You're going to JP Morgan, which has trillions of dollars of assets, right? And it's, hard, it's, it's harder to hack Bitcoin because it's distributed than it is to hack JP Morgan because you know where they keep the money, right? Or the US government and everything that the Federal Reserve is doing. Because, hey, you know, if you can't hack the government, it's going to be, you know, who knows how good they are at that? Yeah. And so I'm not worried about Bitcoin getting hacked at all because it's decentralized, it's distributed, as opposed to big, big, big banks, which are the exact opposite. You know, it's so crazy that um, I never in life ever heard of NFTs until two weeks ago, a friend of ours, shout out to 19 Keys. We're in Miami mm -hmm. and we're eating and he's telling us about this digital art thing and he's explaining it to us. And he's like, you know, imagine if you can... Um, if you're an artist and you can like give your art to somebody for, for a showing um, only for like a week at a time and then it's digital. And he's explaining it to me and I'm still not really understanding it fully. We interviewed 
another <laughs> big, 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 big one. We we can't we can't let the cat. Don't say back. I thought you was gonna we say. We interviewed it. somebody extremely big in the space, and he said only thing he's focused on right now is NFTs. And then I see you made ninety thousand dollars in in sixty minutes or something. Uh, like Twenty. 20. Minutes. 22 <laughs> minutes. I got it. I knew I got to get it right. 90,000 in 22 minutes with like 22 Ethereum. Like it was, they ported it, they ported in Ethereum, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, the, that's how you bro, play. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to breeze over this because from, I mean, I'm this hearing is, enough people let, let me talk about this. If I, okay. So let's just say I just made some money. I just got my first commission check and my first, you know, my first um, deal and I'm just getting started. In the past, I was looking at the stocks, right? The stock, you're at a disadvantage. If you're a little guy just getting started, you're at a disadvantage no matter what, mm -hmm. right? No, man, woman, child, right? Wall Street has got the advantage. With crypto, there's some advantage there for the big players and the whales, right? Because they they under, they know people go to them for, for new deals and new tokens and everything. But on DeFi, right, where you basically buy some Ethereum or buy some other token, and you pull it into a group and they pay you a return on that, right? So that you can, you can use your money to buy something called DAI, which is dollar instruments, right? That kind of track the, the American dollar. And because they need that for swaps, they'll pay you three, four, 5% per year to hold on to that. And it's, really, it's safe, right? Because you, you're not buying Bitcoin, you're not buying this other stuff. And so it's like, you're going to make more money there or you can take a chance. I'm not talking about doggy coin. That's what I tell my son. It's <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun and great to learn, but you know, um, but there's some others like I've bought Ave, AAVE. I've bought, mm -hmm. um, what was the other one I just bought? Um, MFT. I, I bought a variety of one that because I like the software that's underneath them, you know, there's a chance that they're going to go up. And there's some other features that they have so that I can make an interest rate while I'm waiting. And it's like, a, you know, it's like if you bought a stock that paid a good dividend, the higher the dividend, the greater the risk of the company, right? That's just normal. That's why they're paying a higher dividend because their dividend level's here, but the price is lower. So the dividend rate is higher. Well, you've got some of those same types of risks, but it's a very liquid market and you can get and move it around. So if you're, if I was just getting started with my $1,500, I would read everything and anything that I possibly could first about crypto assets, right? Whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, whatever it may be. Sushi, there's one called Sushi. Ave, there's one called Ave. Filecoin, there's all these different coins. And then I would read up on DeFi. The key to making money for someone just getting started is DeFi, decentralized financing, and dig in and read. You can't read enough about it. You can't watch enough videos. If when you learn this, you will learn how to make money quickly. Put aside all but the games and stuff. This is where the money is right now. And because it's so early, the smallest investor can take their stimulus check. I literally would be okay telling somebody, if you do enough of your homework, and after you've paid your bills and your credit card, if you've got some money left over from your STEM check, it's okay to put it in decentralized finance. So Mark, in addition to, to the calling so you like, sorry about that, Troy. Now, I, I was saying, in addition to, to the roll up uh, 21, which is legendary, if anybody hasn't seen that, go see, go look at, go yeah, Google the roll up. I, I did a, <laughs> you guys know what Cameo is, right? Yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I'm going to get in there. So, you also uh, minted a tweet that you had. And so, I'm thinking when you were talking about the card, when it's in mint condition, it's in pristine condition. Is that the same type of situation in this digital art space where it's minted on a platform like Rarible? Yeah. Um, and then you, you put it out. Yeah, mintable. Rare. Okay, so what I did was I'm like, I want to learn about this stuff. So I took a GIF of me getting ready to go work out, walking up this little roll up thing we have that the players do. You know, players come into a game, they get all clean and everything, and they we post pictures on Instagram. And so I walked up just goofing around, just because you know I, I got me doing a little shake, right? And turned it into a GIF, and I put it on. Um, I, for this one, I did mintable or rareable. I forget. But I think it was rareable. Terrible, and, yep. um, yeah. And so I put it out there and I put it at $25, whatever the amount of ETH was in $25. And I put out 20 of them, maybe thinking there's no way I'm going to get $25 a pop for these. Right. And then not 30 minutes later, bam, they were gone. <laughs> and not only were they gone, 
People were selling them and reselling them. And what makes this so much different, particularly for musician, mus musicians and artists and photographers and content creators, what makes it so much different than the, the physical side, every time it got resold, I made 10%. And so it just kept, it, mm -hmm. people kept on buying and selling and buying and selling. And I kept on getting paid. So then I did it again, right? I took, it's just something off the Mavs Instagram, Pop versus Rick, right? For one of our Mavs games, a really cool artwork because we have these really great artists that we work with for um, this thing called the Mark Cuban Experience where we just hire artists to do cool stuff. And I put it out there, same thing. Only this time I did it at 15% royalty. Bam, same thing. The next one, 20% royalty. And then I did a cameo thing one of the features of Mintable is that you can do, um, you can unlock things, right? So when somebody, so the process of minting, you go to mintable.app, right? And what you do is it says, you want to mint something and create your own store or use the Mintable store. So I use the Mintable store and you just upload in this particular case, I did a video saying, hey, if you buy this, I'm going to allow you to unlock a special code in email. And if you send me an email, I'm going to do a, a, a personalized video just for you. Right? Cool. I charged 2,500 bucks a pop for them and I did 20 of them. So, you know, 50 grand and, and for doing 20 of them. And so I put them out there. They were gone in 10 minutes. Just bam, gone. And a couple of people didn't even use them. They're still reselling them. And on that one, I said, I'll take 25%. And so what's really crazy about all this and makes it special is for any digital content, if you can develop a following in an audience, unlike physical goods, like my, my baby John Brisker card, if I sell it and sell it again, nobody gets paid, right? Everybody just, you know, the original creator doesn't get paid. I don't get paid anymore. But on digital art, digital art, digital art can't talk tonight, um, and that's why all your artist friends and musicians are really into this. They keep on getting paid every time it's resold. That mm. changes the game. That changes everything, everything, yeah. you know? And so imagine music, right? Imagine you put, you have a track, you know, pick an artist. Cardi B comes out with a track, right? And instead of, instead of selling it for 99 cents on, uh, or buck 29 on um, Amazon or Google or whatever, right, or Apple, Apple Music, she says, I'm not even giving it to stream uh, Spotify or anything. I'm only selling it for a buck 29 in Ether here. And people start buying it. Well, there's no 30% to Apple for Apple Music. There's no percentage, there's two and a half percent. And if somebody gets tired with that song and decides they want to resell it for 50 cents, Cardi B can take 50% of that. And every time it's sold, so when people, you know, right now, when you look at your digital collection, if you just don't stream everything and you download MP3s like I do, because I like to have it and, you know, who knows when I'm not connected, right? And I'm like, okay, I've got this whole coll collection of stuff I bought and I get tired of this song. Now I just delete it. I'm done with it. Sell it. Sell that thing, right? And Cardi B keeps on getting paid. Hey, I'm Cardi B. I just got paid. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, the, the audience is asking, what, what are the stable coins that you like for clarity? And then also for me, I wanted to know for the young entrepreneurs, what are some of the lessons that you got from running Motley's at IU that you still <laughs> carry with you to this day? Okay, so first on the stable coins, I haven't done a lot with stable coins, but DAI is, is the one that um, I'm the most familiar with. Um, and it seems to work. And, you know, it's like trades at 99.6 cents because there's a 4.5% fee. For, for hosting it, mm -hmm. um, and that works, right? And so you're not gonna have the volatility, it's always meant to stay right around a dollar and, and they managed to have make that work. Um, what did I learn in Bloomington when I ran Motley's Pub before I was old enough to drink? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> one, check everybody's ID. I let in all my friends, yeah. that got me in trouble. Um, two, don't drink all the profits, that got me in trouble. Um, three, have a lot of doormen because people like to fight when they're drunk. Um, four, clean bathrooms. I think that's the biggest lesson, clean bathrooms. People at clubs want clean bathrooms. But bottom line is, you know, whether it was Motley's or doing party promotions, because that's how I made money afterwards, just be nice to people, right? When you're cool and nice to people, people want to do business with you. And if you treat them right, good things happen. 
Re- real quick before, because I know you just put out a new song <laughs> on Twitter and, and oh. there's 20,000 of them. I just want to know what the royalties are on this. Is, did you increase it again? Yeah, I think it's 50% on this one. <laughs> 20,000. Okay, gotcha. No, I haven't sold them all. 10,000, but Digital I haven't sold them estate. all yet. It's all actually, right. so, what happened was um, on one of the private videos I did for somebody, they posted it on Twitter and then somebody took that video and turned it into a song, you know, and just and auto-tune me because you need to auto-tune me and put it out there. <laughs> and so the dude who did that, uh, the song a day guy put out 10,000 copies and we've only sold a few hundred of them, right? For, because there were 30, no, there were $35 each. I'm like, what do you think they'll sell these for $35 each? I, I thought he was going to sell them for three and a half dollars each, but he, he overpriced them. But um, yeah, so it, it, it's been an interesting lesson. The fire, so Fireside app. I'm huh? hearing different things. Fireside. Yep. Fireside. Um, are you are you planning on cutting Clubhouse's lights out? What's going on with no, that? No, no, no. Two different apps. The thing about Clubhouse, and it's cool, right? You go in there and it's kind of spontaneous. Everybody's in there chop talking, just like everybody walked into a room and just chilled out. You know, if it's small, it's like a dorm room. It might be like a conference, whatever. But it, it's ephemeral, meaning there's no copy of it, right? No one saves it. And that's the difference. So with Fireside Chat podcast, the only thing that's really changed is you've added video, right? And video kind of is good in some respects. You get to see people, but it doesn't really change a whole lot, right? Unless you're real visual. And so with Fireside Chat, we stick to audio and it's more like, a, you know, a Fireside Chat, right? Where it's a, the podcast like this, you can take questions from the audience, kind of like Clubhouse, but everything gets saved. That's part one. Part two, you, the goal is to allow the podcasters to make some money. So there's tips, there's subscriptions, there's a variety of options there. Because like you guys, you guys bust your ass to make this work and you try to get sponsors, but sponsorships in the podcast game are tough, right? Because there's so many podcasts and everybody lies about their numbers and this and that. <laughs> and, and so this way, the numbers are real, the tips are real. And you get, um, we'll be doing transcripts of them. So not only can you publish them as a podcast for download, but you can publish them as articles as well. Mm, Dope. Now it is Black History Month and I I don't want to, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention what you're doing with Goal Setter Company, um, the initiative to have 1 million kids start their first bank account. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, really, um, Trey Burke kind of pushed me towards it and some other folks and um, I don't want to overemphasize how much I'm involved, right? I really just try to help them promote, and I like the idea of what they were doing. But if you go to Goal Setter, Goal Setter CO on Twitter, at Goal Setter CO, and what they're doing is try to increase and improve financial literacy for kids, particularly in the inner city. Because one of the challenges we have, I mean, we'll teach, try to teach a lot of things in school, but one of the most important things we don't teach is how to open a bank account, right? What, what, is a credit card and how do you deal with money? Kids particularly just have no idea how to deal with money. I mean, I didn't have my first bank account until I was like 16 years old and that's crazy, you know? And so Goal Setter um, really is about having kids get their first bank accounts, learn more about money and how to deal with it so that when they get that first job, they're not surprised and they know what to do. And they're not out there, you know, not only not blowing their money, but thinking that you don't have to pay back a credit card and doing crazy stuff. Ian. Let's say someone comes to you and I know there's no easy answer, um, but for those who are aspiring to be decamillionaires, billionaires, what advice would you give them for building wealth? If they are super passionate, they have a competitive advantage, they're in a good industry. So the landscape is different than when you initially became entrepreneur, but what blueprint would you give them? Well, actually it's pretty much the same, right? It hasn't changed all that much. I mean, first, you've got to be motivated. I mean, I drove around looking at the big houses with, you know, my car with a hole in the floorboard and, you know, just how do I help, how do I get out of this hell hole and, and change, change my life? And that was my motivation. And then I realized I was a bad employee. But what it really came down to is finding something that I could be good at and busting my ass to be great at it. Because when you're great at something, you, you can figure out a way to turn it into a business. The one thing you don't want to be in a position of doing is thinking, you know, I want to start my own company. What should I start my company with? You know, I get people all all the time. Well, I want to start a company. What should I do? What kind of company should I start? If that's what you're asking yourself, don't do it. You're not ready. 
right? When you really are good at something, you start finding the angles, right? And finding ways that you can make money. If you're an artist, you find ways that you can sell it. If you're a musician, you bust your ass to find ways to sell it. That doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a success. But if you keep on getting better and better, like in my case, I busted my ass not only to be a great salesperson, but to know tech. I wasn't, you know, I didn't go to college for tech. I had to teach myself every little thing. Talking about NFTs, I mean, NFTs were new for me too, right? They're all relatively new, but I'm putting in hours and hours and hours a day reading and watching everything that I can because I know that's part of the next big thing. It's the same as blockchain. How am I going to understand our artificial intelligence? I'm going through these tutorials and just putting in hours. I mean, not minutes not just checking it out and reading a tweet or an article hours every day, because I got to be at the top of my game. And that applies to every business. Are you putting in the hours to be great at what you do and giving yourself a competitive advantage, knowing that you're proud and excited to sell whatever it is you're selling product or service and, or to build whatever it is that you're building. If you're not so excited and so bought in and so into it that, you know, you just spend hours and you think it was 15 minutes or you mm-hmm. wake up with ideas in the middle of the night. If you're not that compelled by it, yeah. you're not doing it right. And it's Are probably- you still reading five hours a day? What's that? Are you still reading five hours a day, every day? I mean, it used to be less. Now I'm reading more because I'm trying to keep up with the AI stuff. I'm trying to learn more about all these different blockchains, which are the best, who's, you know, is Ethereum 2.0 going to happen? What standards are going to happen? So I'm reading even more and going in there. And look, this whole thing, when I did the, the, the roll up thing, right, that was me just giving myself my own tutorial and spending a, a lot of time and experiencing it. And, you know, most people won't take that time to say, okay, let me try it. Not be afraid of making a mistake, not being afraid. Okay, I'm going to look like an idiot in this GIF, but hey, if someone wants to pay me 25 bucks, <laughs> I'll be an idiot, work. right? Yeah. I, it looks so like you were going to the... Time. It Mark. looks like you're going in a WWF ring. The legend, man. That's that's <laughs> Mark. How are we doing with time? I want to be respectful of your time. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We good. All right. I want to. I want to do something oh, extremely. Good. I want to do something extremely legendary. But before that, I just wanted to um ask you because, you know, I guess the vast majority. We have twelve thousand people on here, by the way. Breaking that's, news alert. That's that's a record. Everybody hit the like the button. That's a, that's a lot of that's people. A lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of people, lot. man. Um, so you know the vast majority of people, you know, working class environments and they're coming up. You're a billionaire four times over, I believe. So how are you like, I how is it different? I like, say that again. I like here. <laughs> Run it back. Run it back. <laughs> Billy times four, man. Billy times four. So you, you have, you have a unique perspective as far as I want to know, like just a quick overview, if you can, how does your financial planning different? Like, do you have a dedicated team for accounting, your estate plan, like your tax mitigation? How is a billionaire doing financial planning? So my first rule of financial planning is very simple. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that can go wrong, right? Don't fuck it up. After that, yeah, I've got accountants. I've got lawyers. I've got people that do due diligence on jo- on stuff. But it's still, I mean, you know, I've got, I, I don't have to take a lot of risks, right? You know, because I, I'm going to be good. My family's going to be good. My kids are going to be good. So it's not like I have to chase things like I was before. When I didn't have anything, it's just like, go, 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 go. And now, you know, it's bizarre in a lot of ways. And it's still crazy. I, I still shake my head a lot of times. You know, it's just like... What the fuck? <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna lie, right? I'm not gonna lie. And so, you know, it's not. I'm not the type. Look, just look around me, right? You know, I got my Dennis Rodman jersey over there, right? I got the, you know, the Larry Bryan back behind me. This place is a mess. I don't care, right? I don't got butlers. I don't have this. I got a jet though. That's good. But you know, it's. Just, I'm just trying to live my life and and just enjoy. It. You know, the one thing my dad always taught me is you can't get back time. And rather than worried about being one way, and this is the way someone who's rich is supposed to be, I'm not that at all, man. And so there's probably family office. I don't have a family office, right? And, and I always get this, well, let me talk to your family office. I'm like, you're talking to them. You know, it's just, I want to spend time with my family. I want to enjoy my life. I want to just 
take advantage of, you know, whatever time we have on this planet. I want to try to do the right thing. I want to try to help people. I want to try to change things that need to be changed. You know, what money buys me isn't trying to, you know, be somebody that looks and acts rich. My friends from high school and college, my rugby team in Indiana, my rugby, you know, my, my roommates and dorm mates, and they're all still my great friends. People that I live with in Dallas, they're all still my guys, right? And girls for that matter. Um, but I, you know, I can't get back time. And so I optimize, not try to maximize how much cash I'm going to have in the bank or how much I'm worth. That's not what I optimize at all. I'm like, how mu- what can I do to give myself better use of my time and enjoy my life to the hilt, right? Because I'm, I'm just blessed to no end. And I just want to enjoy every motherfucking minute of it. And, you know, and that's what money buys you more than anything. And I know lots of rich people and the people that were miserable when they weren't rich are still miserable because they worry about everything, worry about every little thing. And the people who were happy, go lucky, loving life when they were poor and then made it, they have a great time. And I love hanging out with them. That's what I tell. That's what I tell. That's what I say. That's what I say. That's what I tell. I I tell my friends all the time. That bottle back there? Yeah. That's that's the big bottle. (laughs) That's what I tell my friends all the time, man. They, They don't agree with me. I'm glad somebody backed me up on that. If you're happy without money, you're going to be extremely happy with money. Yeah, yeah. When, I was, when I was broke, sleeping on the floor. Did I tell you guys a story about how I got my first car in Dallas after mine broke yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, you know, when I, when I was broke, I was loving life. It's just, you know, I'm happier now, but, you know, it, just, <laughs> it is That's what honest. it is. Um, r- r- really quick. Um, how many companies are you invested in with MCC and for the entrepreneurs? What are the things that when you're looking to invest in a company that you're just like, I have to do this deal? Like what qualities or traits are you looking at when you're looking at an entrepreneur? That- it's about 250 now. If you want to check them out, you can go to markcuban.com. And so I look for a couple of different things. One, um, I look for people who are smart, that are learners, that are workers and grinders, um, that that really have a product or service that they so believe in that every minute of every day they're working on it or selling it because they know that product or service can help people. I look for companies that are differentiated. A lot of people lie to themselves. A lot of entrepreneurs lie to themselves. You know, when you find yourself describing your product or service with ERS and S, you know, it's faster, it's the biggest or whatever, you've already lost because somebody out there, else out there is more ER and more S and it's just a race. Right. I, I try to find things that are protectable, unique, differentiated. And then, you know, over the last couple of years, I've really tried to look in communities where the money's not right. There's so many smart people where there's no money that there are a lot of great deals. Now, they start smaller. There's no question about it. But there's a lot of small, smart people in disadvantaged communities that there's no money there for them. And so if I can get to them and they're super smart and they meet my roles, I'm all in. Right. Um, and I think there's there's just more and more of those. And so that to me is a competitive advantage because a lot of a lot of VCs, a lot of angels, a lot of seed investors don't want to look in underserved communities. They, you know, they don't understand it, they don't see the differences. To me, you know, that's that's where a lot of things can happen. And again, if you go onto my site, you'll see companies, you're like, where the hell did those come from? You mm-hmm. know, or why is he in that? And that's because there's a lot of unique opportunities there. Mark, what I want to do is just take a couple minutes if we can. So I want to, like I said, we always try to do something the most extremely legendary. legendary situation possible. So it's very rare that you have an opportunity to even, you know, hear from, you know, a billionaire, but very rare that you have an opportunity to speak to a billionaire. So we have some people on Zoom. We uh, we got some 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 pre-vetted questions. So <laughs> if you if you don't mind, we're going to just have a couple people to um, ask you questions. EYL University is the biggest. You went to Indiana University, but we started EYL University. That's cool. The biggest. The biggest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try this. All right, Tyler, we coming to you. Unmute yourself. You have been unmuted. Tyler, what's going on? Man, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm very, very excited to be here, man. This is amazing. Appreciate Tyler, it. How are appreciate you? you, bro. Oh, man. Um, so, Mark, I'm going to get right to it. Uh, my question was more... Through this line of questioning tonight in the interview, I actually feel like I need to change my question. But my original question is... When you get to investing into sports teams and things of that nature, is this more for a love of the game or is it strictly for return on investment? Oh, no, it's love of the game, man. All those fines I've gotten, all that money I've lost all those years, 
I mean, let me just tell you, Tyler, look, winning is great. Winning a trophy is amazing. Losing is painful. But after all that on the court, I get to go out before games, almost every home game. If I can get there early enough, 3.30 before a 7.30 game, I get to go on my court and I get to get shots up on my NBA court and just get out there and shoot, 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 because nothing clears my head more than getting shots up. I mean, no matter what the stress of the day is, I can, if I can get out there and shoot, my head is clear. I feel good. And if they're falling and it's wet, boom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then right, so if the guys are coming out um, and I'm shooting and, and I'm winning, right? Then I'm like, let's go. I'm out. You know, it's just that that's just so amazing. I'm a, I, I've been a basketball junkie as long as I can remember and playing basketball as long as I can remember. So it's more about ball is life than it is. Can I make some money? Ball is life. Okay. Ball is life. I, I, I know. I noticed it. I noticed that image on your court of the other night. Is that is that the Kobe fadeaway that you got on the court now? Dirk, that's Dirk. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We were wondering. I'm like, well, Dirk's the legend himself. Yeah. Appreciate that question, Tyler. Uh, boss, we coming to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on? Carlos, how you guys doing? Good, we are good. great. What's how going on? Hello, Mr. Steven. How you doing? Yeah, man. Call me Mark, boss. Cool, Mark. Uh, thank you. Um, just to go back to to the uh, the Fireside app, uh, when you, when are you looking to uh, start that up, and are you looking for content creators? Yeah, um, we will be looking for content creators. Probably in April, we'll start the beta, and then once we get the feedback, we'll start expanding the beta. So just you know, um, put it set up. You know, and this, I'll tell this to everybody. One of the best tools that's underutilized, that's free, is Google Alerts. I mean, excuse mm -hmm. me, and so. Go into Google, go into alerts.google.com, I think it is. And whether it's Fireside Chat, whether it's your favorite sports team, I put my name in there, I put my company's names in there. Google sends me a list of anywhere it's been mentioned on, on any platform. And so if you want to track uh, Fireside um, Chat, just put it in there in an alert and you'll get everything related to it. Uh, appreciate that, boss. Boss. Thank you. Uh, no, Emmy, we are coming to you. What's going on? Unmute yourself. You have been unmuted. Hi, good night. Um, good day to everybody. Hi, Mark. My question to you, I'm going to go straight to it, is I heard your first interview and you focus a lot about, you know, self-teaching. So that made me think of this question. What would you say is the most unexpected lesson that you learned throughout your business career? Ooh, good one. Don't matter how many times you fail, you only got to be right once. And everybody can tell you how lucky you are. <laughs> yeah, That's it. It's great That's entrepreneur, it. man. And it's one shot. Yeah, you, <laughs> you pick any great entrepreneur, and they failed many times. You just don't know about them because no one talks about the failures, right? There, there's no mm -hmm. thing for, for screw-ups. Um, but somebody gets it right, then you're an overnight success. And, and that's what I learned. It was okay to fail. I just had to keep on grinding. All right. Thank you. That's powerful. Thank you. That's a lot. Nah, that's that's, that's like it's powerful. like it's like baseball. All it takes is one. Just one. One grand slam home run. Nobody that's cares it. how many times you struck out. That's yeah, it. Exactly right. And if you miss, you know, if, if you get out seventy percent of time, you may be an all star, <laughs> right? Three hundred. All you gotta do is bat three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, Javante, what's going on? Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, Mr. Troy? Everything's been good. How are you? How y'all doing? I'm man, man. My yeah, brother, how are you? Oh, your Wi-Fi is crashing. Oh, Javante. Let, let, let me sneak one in there real quick. How do you manage work-life balance? Yep. Oh, 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 work-life work -life balance? For the longest uh, time, I didn't. The Wi-Fi messed up on. Oh. Yeah, it's called work, got, work, got, work, got work, 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 work. I'm going to mute you, Devante, Javante. Got to mute you. Okay, Mark. Oh, yeah. For the longest time, I, there was no balance. You know, it was eat, sleep, drink, work. I mean, I had girls I was dating, and it'd be like, it's me or your business. And I was like, what's your name business. again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was on a mission, but, you know, as I got older and I was more successful, then I didn't have to stress as much about it. And that's when I settled down some. That's, that's like, I, I, 
everything he says just resonates with me so much because we was on a podcast. We got interviewed for a podcast last week and they was asking like, you know, what's your, um, how is your work life balance? And I'm like, my, my life is not balanced. It's, yeah, I don't know anyone unbalanced. that has a balanced life that's entrepreneur. Ho hopefully one day it'll become balanced, but it's extremely unbalanced right now. I'm striving for it. You're hustling. <laughs> I'm striving for it. Uh, DG, you are unmuted. I'm just, you already unmuted yourself. What's going on? Hi, this is actually his wife. My husband's a frontline worker, so he wasn't able to make it tonight. But we had a question for you, uh, Mark, in regards to your entire career. What are the three things that you've done consistently that you think would breed success for you? Number one, I learned. Always be learning. I just learn, learn everything I could. Number two, I'm a salesperson. You know, if you have your own company, you got if, if you don't love your product more than everybody else in the world, you're not going to succeed. And third, I was, I'm agile, right? Nothing ever goes in a straight line. You always got to be adaptive and be willing to change and willing to, to understand that it's not easy, right? You're going to have to jump sometimes. Thank you. That's great. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank your husband for what he does. Yeah, of course, thank I will. Thank you. For all, all he does. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. You. All essential workers. Yeah, all our frontline workers, we, we are greatly appreciative of everything that you do and everything that you risk on a daily basis. So I don't want that to go over anybody's head and be remiss if we didn't mention it. So thank you yep. again. Mark Cuban is the coolest billionaire that I know. Ever in history. <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> huh? Am I the only one? Yeah, you're yeah, the only yeah, one. Yeah, it's just a small <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, uh, only it's a very you. short list. <laughs> it's a very short, a very short <laughs> list. For now, for now. <laughs> for now, but my first, my first experience. Nah, the guy, the guy's a class act, man. His whole team. Shout out, shout out to, shout out to Jacob. Shout out to, uh, shout out to everybody. Actually, shout out to Aaron Hampton once again. Shout out to Dawn. And it was so crazy when, when I, when I, I, I emailed them, and he emailed me back from his own personal email. And I'm expecting like to have like five people like playing like <laughs> trumpets. Like you got to talk to this people. People have talk like, to this guy, talk to yeah, that nah, guy. cause you, you'd be surprised. People, people will be like regular, like, uh, like just regular, like business people. And they're like, Oh, you got to talk to my assistant, 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 assistant. I'm like, yeah. really? Is it necessary? <laughs> is it that really, is it that serious? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick story. Like one time um, I went in to see, Do I went into Donald Trump's office. Right. Long story short, and I walk in, and this is 2000, and he wanted to talk to me about internet. And first I had to go through an assistant, and then I had to go through somebody else, right? And then you walk in, and every inch of every wall is covered with pictures of him. Just him, right? <laughs> Just him. And, and I did, you know, talk to him. It was no big deal, whatever. And then I get out there, and the minute I get out of there... I get back and I get on my laptop and I email my buddies. You know, they're like, oh, how was it with Trump? I'm like, dude, if I ever act like that, where I'm that stuck up that I have pictures everywhere, smack me down, right? And that's the thing, you know, my friends then, my friends from school are my friends now. Yeah. And they're not gonna let me be that way, you know? Now we have to Zoom instead of hang together. Um, but that's just, you know, when you've got a good group of family and you've got a good group of friends, it's just easy to be me and just easy to chill. You know, I don't need all those formalities. Yeah. If the market would have crashed tomorrow, um, cause I was walking to Ballantyne when I heard this college strategy at IU, if the market would have crashed tomorrow, what, how would you play it to mitigate as much risk as possible? I'm hedged. I'm hedged right now. How are you hedging now? So I got this thing called a tailwind hedge where the more the market goes down, the more the VIX accelerates up, then, the more these options kick in, right, and get mm -hmm. bought. Um, and so, because once, once you, I try not to be greedy. The biggest mistake that people make in the markets are they get greedy. I just want a little bit more. I just want a little bit more. Well, the more you're getting, the, by definition, the more risk is in the system. And the risk never leaves the system. Sometimes it gets pushed around, but like the people with GME and others found out, it always finds its way back to you. And, excuse me, my attitude is, that, okay, I don't need it all. And so I'm gonna take some of my profits and hedge. I might be you know, buying puts, I might be selling calls and buying puts, I might be using futures, whatever it may be, but I'm gonna protect myself. And I did it going in you know, before 2008, 
I've done it all, you know, my, you know, did it after I sold broadcast.com my entire career, I've done it. And some people have said, Oh, you're crazy. You left this amount of money on the table or that amount. I don't need it all. Yeah. I just need to keep what I got, right? I need to protect what I got. And that was the way I felt before I had this much money, right? Don't get greedy. Don't try to squeeze out every nickel. Protect yourself because markets do crash and they do crash a lot. And the reality is if you're the one with cash, when it crashes, you're going to make the most amount of money. Yeah. Like when the shit hit the fan and went down in March, I was, I was in decent shape, right? So I was taking cash that I had and buying more. And, you know, things worked out. What, what percentage of options versus features? And are you riding the VIX future upward or are you shorting it and riding it down to like me? Well, now it's relatively low, right? And so yeah. I think there's a much better chance that it goes up than it mm -hmm. goes down. Now you can't play the VIX directly. You have to trip, play, it, play it indirectly. Um, and so there's, there's different angles. Um, but, you know, the more complex it gets, the more expensive it gets. And so you've got to really know what you're doing. And really, it depends what your assets are in. You know, what stocks do you own and what, what you know, are the, what do you think about them? And, you know, are you willing, you know, if they crash, if Netflix goes from 550 to 75, I'm still going to hold Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. But if, you know, I have Netflix and that's my, that's my retirement fund, how old am I? Am I 65? Am I 25? If I'm 25, I hold on. If I'm 45, I sell a little just to make sure I got some cash to cover in case things get worse. But I try to hold as much as I can because historically over the years, if it's a good company, it comes back. I got, can, one, can we, we do something? We got a surprise. Can we yeah, do something? Yeah. Mark, I got a, a dear friend of mine. He, it would be, it would be, he'd kill me if I didn't let him ask a question. So I'm going to unmute him. And he just wants to get one more, one less question. A, a legend, a legend in his own right. The, the YouTube comments is going to go crazy when he when he comes on. Hey, um, cool. Wall Street Trapper. What's going on? <laughs> You've been unmuted. Unmute yourself. How y'all feeling? Hi, My God. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Mark, Mark Cuban. How you doing, man? It's a pleasure, it's an honor for my brothers to let me even have this opportunity right here. What are you trapped? Stocks, Stocks on Wall Street. Oh, I didn't okay. okay. <laughs> you an address, right? I, you know, but <laughs> now nah, listen, we trapping on Wall Street, man. We teaching something new, man. With my brother, man. We just we changing lives, man. So I definitely appreciate appreciate them letting me tap in with you for a second. Come on. So I, my question is, um, I've been doing a lot of research lately on space stocks, not just Virgin Galactic, but I think it's a $2 trillion industry going forward. I see that a lot of companies, um, NPA was one company I was looking at. And I just want to know what you thought about the next wave being into space and satellites. I want to know what you thought about that. So satellite and space are two different things, right? Um, so I don't, space obviously is going to happen, right? You know, you got Elon in there doing his thing. You've got renewables. I've got investment in a company called Relativity Space, but it's a private company. It may be public at some point in the not too distant future. But the honest answer, whilst Mr. Trapper, is that <laughs> it's hard, right? Playing play space is, is really, really hard. So I, I don't have, I haven't put in the time to give you a good answer. And look, I, I'm the first to admit, if I don't know it because I haven't done the work, better not to do anything than guess. You know, so I, I don't have a good answer for you, Mr. Trapper. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, in, in the same light, I, I was wondering, obviously you said AI and that's why you invested in Netflix and in uh, Amazon. Any thoughts on the EV market? They, they keep texting me about it. Ask them about EV. Are you, is that something you're yeah. looking at? Yeah, I, I haven't paid, you know, I don't own Tesla. There's so many companies now with SPACs trying to get into it. Um, the closest thing I have is a Shark Tank company. By the way, Shark Tank Friday nights on ABC, 8 yes. p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, Central. The Big um, Shark. Yeah. There's a company called Spark Charge, which helps, you know, which really is a service like AAA, where if you're low on battery, we'll come and give you a jump to um, get you wherever you need to go to get recharged. But um, there's, there's so much talk about batteries and battery renewal, but it's just it's just a race, right? There's it's a race between all these legacy auto manufacturers and trying to compete with Tesla that the only thing I feel confident in 
is that there's going to be more and more good competition. And when there's that much good competition, because EV is the future, not gas, EV. And I think yeah. the GM that said they're going to be out of gas motors by 2035. Yeah. Yep. Forever, but 15 years goes by fast. And if they're going to be out in 15 years, that means, you know, they're not going to be just sitting on their laurels or just letting Tesla take over the market. So it's going to get super competitive. And so I'll be paying more attention to it, but I don't have one stock to invest in right now. Mark, Mark, you're a gentleman in a scholar came on market Mondays. We hit 13,000. Breaking news alive. alert. Um, <laughs> the greatest <laughs> ever walk Bloomington. I appreciate yeah, you dearly. Man. You are. Uh, just to, just like I said, man, we really appreciate it because when you came on the podcast and you know you were short for time, and you you said invite me on Market Mondays. I come on Market Mondays, and um, you know just a class, a true class act, a true class act. Yeah. I just can't say that enough. And um, we scouted, we scouted. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> legit, man. It's a real deal, and yeah. it's like you know you have to um, acknowledge that because it's important to be. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Yep. And um, he's a he's a he's a complete class act, a complete gentleman. And um, yeah, yeah, I just I just greatly appreciate it. I, you I, really I, know me, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to thank the NBA schedule for allowing the Dallas Mavericks to have one Monday off. One That's Monday off. Yeah. That's That's crazy. Crazy. We were supposed to do this like weeks ago, but every Monday. <laughs> one Monday this season. I'm like, it's got to be the 15th. This, this is the first time since the beginning of the season that the Mavs have had two days off in a row. It's been crazy. Wow. It has been crazy. COVID season is out of control. Yeah, and we and we put the guy DMX. We heard you the first no, time. No, <laughs> fame. That's my song, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know that song, fame. That's, yep. that's, that's my jam, man. That's when I'm when I'm down and I you just yeah, give me a bone, baby. Let's go. You know that's my I, song. I can't wait to 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 sit down with X and, and ask him if he remembers that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. God, your dog don't know. I don't know, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words of um, advice, investing, or business, uh, business yeah, related? Get up to speed on DeFi, decentralized finance. Do that. That is the one thing where you can have an advantage over all the big Wall Street players. Maybe not Mr. Trapper, but everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and really have an edge and, and make, make some money. Um, if you're if you're a little bit careful, you truly can make more money than you can in the bank with you know less risk than Wall Street. Um, this is just early days, like the early days of the internet, and you can really get an edge. I, I love it. I appreciate it. it. And uh, good luck on the rest of the season. You take it. Luca is sure. out there performing at an extremely high level. Amazing. Forty-four. The, no. the Western Conference is tough. LeBron's my favorite. Is LeBron the best? Let's 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 address the elephant. In the Jordan room. or LeBron? Let's do is, this. Is LeBron the greatest player of all time? Go. Depends on who else is on the squad, right? Because it's still a team game. It's not one on one, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you got Answer. if you need you got four great players and you need somebody to make them all better, LeBron best yeah. ever. Right, because he makes everybody on his team a lot better, and he knows he at winning time. He knows how to get the right guys in the right spot. Jordan, on the other hand, if you've got guys who can just keep you close, and you need one bucket to win the game, I'm going with Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Spoken like a true owner. Can't, can't argue. <laughs> I argue that. Well, what, what can we do to help you and support you? No, yeah, invite me back, man. I like it. Tell people. Yo, dog, come back. Fame. Out. Mark yeah, to go. We got to get you and DMX on at the same time. It's going to work, right? <laughs> you know, watch Shark Tank on Friday nights. That's what y'all can do. Absolutely. All right. Mark, yeah, pleasure, bro. Appreciate, appreciate you. you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Features, baby. Go IU. Hey, IU. Everybody <laughs> back home. What? Told you. See you guys. It's lit. Thank have, you. Have a good night. Legendary. Well, you don't. No. Hedge, risk, <laughs> options, futures, long-term, Apple, Microsoft. What else do y'all want, baby? Oh, that's, that's For Mark, Billy. Oh, that's Mark Cuban. For man. Billy. Oh, that's Mark Cuban. He 250 told you. 250 companies he, invested. The guys, the guys worth $4 billion. Not only did he tell you what he's invested in, the company that he's looking at, he told you to wave. like oh, the future. It's five times, like, invest in this. Invest your stimulus check. What else can we talk about? The culture. Google Stablecoin tonight. <laughs> what, else can we do? <laughs> what else can we do for the culture? We <sighs> love y'all. Um, hopefully we get to 15 so we can get us away and that tailwind strategy I want you guys to go google an options playbook if you need some resources to look options is not my thing 
but you see he snuck that futures thing in. Now go back and watch what Bonowin said about the VIX derivative and write it down with mean reversion. Biggest, biggest in the game. Okay. Look, man, this you know what said, time we it said is. if we hit ten thousand, no, you know we're we gonna just yeah. we just gonna do something out of love on our end. Shout out yeah, to my boy too. Ken. Uh gave, he just he just sent five hundred on for the for the cash app. So what we're gonna what do up, is though? this this I mean obviously we can't tell you what to do, but we really want to try to help somebody get an investment. If you have not, let's use the honor system here, right? Yep. If you have if you do not have an investment account, if mm -hmm. you have never invested, you don't have an investment account, we're gonna send we're gonna send a few people some money so they yep. can open and if, how much you think it's a good amount to send some people to open an investment account? What you think, Smalls? Five? I'm gonna do twenty five hundred. Ooh. I, I mean, we just matched that thing. Right, we we'll match it. We'll match so it. We're going to do five bands, five bands on the wake up. Culture. Culture. <laughs> hey, you. Culture. Everybody back in Indianapolis. Five Everybody bands in Bloomington. We're going to give some money to EYLU. We're going to give uh, money to uh, YouTube. So cash out your life away. <laughs> Go ahead. Man, this is going crazy. Janet, you know how this goes. Hey, while we here and we talking about Janet, hey, everybody in the chat, everybody in Zoom, everybody on YouTube. It's Janet's birthday oh, Saturday. Happy birthday. Hey. Come on, queen. Hey. You got to give Janet some up. love. It's her birthday. Man, Troy, send me her cash up ASAP. Janet, you the most <laughs> amazing person ever. The sweetest person nah, she's ever. She's incredible. She's incredible. Yeah. It's her birthday. Show us some love, y'all. Everybody show us some love. It's actually on Saturday, but we're going to send her some love right now. Wall Street Trapper just threw a thousand dollars in the pot. Let's get it going. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. 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 Trapper. Hey, look, listen, <laughs> content wise, you need to go clip that Mr. Trapper thing right now and make that every drop. Oh, it's a lot go. of content. Mr. Yeah. Trapper. You got Mark Cuban saying that's Mr. how we go. I guess that's, I'm gonna change that in my oh, phone. Oh, oh, hold, hold on, hold on. Okay, let, let's go. What we got okay. Books, okay. books to read, happy money. I even do psychology of money. Psychology of money. Red Panda Family Stock Club members, of course, I still got you. There you go, Buffett, the man himself. The Lord, wizard. Okay. This is good because this Oil 101 book will let you see the rise and decline. It's going to be oh, great MG the EV market for you to know how M long. MG it. just stepped in. MG, the mortgage guy, has thrown a thousand dollars in the pot. Whew. Keep playing. I'm gonna throw in another twenty five hundred. I'm gonna win. <laughs> but Jay said, you know the same back in the day, right? Yo, get Atlanta. Get all of our rich friends on Atlanta. Hey, yo, we gotta line. get them on the line. Call Alex. Where's him five hey, hundred? Get Maddie J on the line. Get Neil on the line. Yo, call the Atlanta crew, man. Give that's, to that's the people. At least 10 bands right there. Oh, wait, wait. Shout out to my new Rochelle crew. I see they checking in. Thomas, what up, Joe? What up? We're going to get these out tonight. And the last one is uh, Big Debt Crisis by Ray Dalio. So, Sapiens, uh, the Buffett, the making of an American capitalist. Sapiens, this is a great book. I am bringing up these credit default swapping. Is this for a reason? Red Panda family, you already know why. I love y'all. And then for everyone watching on YouTube, all the earnest oil 101 will help you with the electronic vehicle market to understand the rise and fall of an incredible asset, um, yeah. the crushed up dinosaur bones that powers our cars. It'll help you understand <laughs> how long the electronic vehicle space will be uh, prevalent. Yeah, all, all this cold air has has had the, the oil prices going up, man. It can't, it can't we be need to go Hawaii with DMX, no. dog. Yeah. Uh. He in Miami right now with Nori. They had um, Mark Cuban had a, they had no lights. That's, That's crazy. Why he's in the dark. Yeah, he still did it. It's a snowstorm. Yeah. I seen Ben X playing snowball with his kids in Dallas, Texas. I'm like, what's going on out here? Global warming, people. It is. <laughs> oh, cold, speaking man. of that, speaking of that, I was watching 60 Minutes yesterday, and um, they had they had um, Bill Gates on, mm -hmm. and William uh, H. He was talking about, but the thing that really piqued my interest was they had a thing about um, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And you know, as an investor, when you, when, when you see everything as an investment. So when he, when um, they had that segment about um, cybersecurity and I hit Trap like, yo Trap, what's a good cybersecurity ETF? He's like, yeah, I yeah. hack. Right. And I'm like, I hack, I'm gonna I'm look into I hack. Cause we've been hearing so once it was on 60 minutes, it mm -hmm. was so much, I'm like, okay. Crowd strike mm -hmm. still, Trap probably had one of the best calls of last year. CrowdStrike yeah, yeah, yeah. probably will be probably be the Microsoft of cybersecurity. He definitely said that. Yeah. Yeah. Please go look. Go go to the, their website and look at their business model. It is Geek Squad combined with another company. 
the model is brilliant. And look at the retention rate of the Fortune 500. CEO is absolutely yeah. amazing. Go look, go do your research. Go look through all the press releases they've done to investor relations. Go look at the business model and then take that valuation uh, model that I gave you and go compare them to every other competitor and then start to check off competitive advantages. It is a clear shot. Is it, they are the Michael Jordan right now of that space. And, and LeBron rolled in one. Next week, Kanye West will be on. <laughs> Kanye West will be We're on. We're not going to cap like that. But yeah, you need to come on and quit playing. <laughs> Don C, come on, Kane. <laughs> Midwest love. Bring Gay through. The biggest in the game, man. Jan, I think what are we doing? Janet, how many are we taking? Janet, can you, uh, what are we doing? $500? Can we tell piece? them who's coming next week or no? Let's do, let's do five. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Let's, let's do yeah. five. Five YouTube, <laughs> five um, earners, Janet. It's a big one, though. Back to back. You know, we rolling back to back. Oh, no. We got something lined up for the, the next four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, about, yeah. it's about to be another storm. <laughs> yeah, it's about we, to be another storm. These comments are crazy. If you guys enjoyed tonight's episode, type yes. Of course, we'll put the slides out so you can have the full um, valuation metrics. But the 72-day moving average, add that to your chart. Um and then that price channel, you guys add, please don't say that I didn't look out, but we're gonna, like, I'm literally gonna break down every company in S&P 500, NASDAQ, Russell 2000, and we're gonna get to it. Futures though, hey. I keep telling you, all the billionaire, quick tip, every billionaire knows how to invest and trade because it's a part of a complete strategy of building wealth. Mm -hmm. Every single one, hove two, yay two. <laughs> hey, real quick, Wednesday earnings. Shopify is gonna be reporting uh before, Maybe. before uh opening and um after closing on Wednesday. We got Twilio and Fastly, two companies that, that we've been looking at. Thursday, Walmart, it's a big one. And Jamal, you're gonna love this. After that uh closing, we got Roku reporting. I know you've been I know you don't look over here like Roku that. Solid. <laughs> Roku Jamal, solid. you still uh, Roku? <laughs> <laughs> Man, Dang. oh, man. well played. Yeah, yeah, hold, yeah, yeah. hold for ten years, please do. <laughs> this this Wednesday, we are having our conversation on EYL University about investing. We're gonna open up our portfolio. EYL University, the biggest in the game. I might raise the price. I might raise the price. <laughs> undervalued. We never extremely. under extremely undervalued. Five hundred dollars, you get. A hundred webinars, weekly webinars, financial plan. I could I could charge twenty five hundred dollars just for a financial plan. That's what people don't understand. There's, there's people in my business that charge five hundred dollars. That charge five hundred dollars for a half an hour, half an hour conversation. We charge five hundred dollars for a hundred, a hundred webinars, weekly webinars, book club, movie club, MG comes down to execution. Blueprint. Yep. Price is doubling. That has to happen. Stock club members, <laughs> no call tonight, but as of tomorrow, we will be doing chart review every day starting tomorrow. I love you guys. Biggest in the game. Yeah, we did it again. Love is love. We did it again. Who so you guys want to see on next? We got to get Warren Buffett on before he passes. I want to give him his flowers. <laughs> Elon. Warren Buffett. Elon. Elon, Elon for sure. Kathy too. Don, we need Don to C. Don C. Free Bring game champion. Free game champions every day. Type yes in chat. Type, type yes in chat for real if you guys want us to break down every single company in the market. I got hella C4 and, and in the green market? juice. I'm gonna break down every one. No, that's that's impossible. That, that, yeah, that's yeah, impossible. I've impossible. done it already. Shit. <laughs> what you mean, huh? Jim Rat. Thoroughly? Jim, Jim Rat. Jim Rat. <laughs> I don't Respect. do nothing but this and take care of my kid. I treat this like the league. Cultural, cultural icons. What's your um, name? Cultural icons, man. Free game, man. Mark Yo. Mondays, legendary, a legendary production. And next yeah, week, we're getting back to the prices too. I know we was, we're going to still going to do the disclaimer, <laughs> but we're going to get back to letting you guys ask about the prices too. Um, or ask about companies. I'm going to give you the price. EYO Network, shout out to the bro, Ash Cash, Inside the Vault. Shout out to Dave Shan. New episode just dropped. Dave Shan's new episode just dropped. Social Proof Podcast. Mm -hmm. I do Fire. Fire. What you know what, him? Ash Cash podcast so fire. I'm scared to DM him. I'm like, damn, you got candy. I'm Ash like, Cash, hey, this guy got Yo. everybody. I'm like, how do you man. know? Man, <laughs> <You're laughs> 
Yep. We need a we need we need a we need a woman to add to the team. I feel like every label had a you know what I'm saying like we, yeah, we need, need we need a few. We, need, we need some feminine energy. It's too it's too masculine right now. We need some feminine energy. So yeah, for yeah, my entrepreneurs some- though, use this blueprint though the business thing. No matter what happens, you can dictate what happens in your life. If you have a business, ideally, you want to be able to have four, but anchor around one, and then use that freedom satellite. But use the same model of putting out content. I guarantee you when we're done on here, man, Mark, he's reading more than five hours a day. So he's probably going through 600 pages a day. I thought I was doing something with 200. Got to step it up, entrepreneurs. More content, more reading, more execution. Freedom. Okay. Freedom. Thursday Thursday at 7 p.m. Breaking news. Out. Thursday Breaking at news. 7 p.m. Him 500, the legend himself, will be teaching a class to uh, all earners, earners and blueprint. If you're in the blueprint, if you're an earner, um, break bread. MG the mortgage guys, break bread. <laughs> oh man, man. Crazy. him 500. Marcus Barney, the five, big B. For $500 a year? The out, big B. Out of your mind? Hey, some of the text messages that we were getting after listening to his uh, his open enrollment, man. The amount, of, the amount of money he's having shout, people make. Shout out to him 500, man. Different level. Shout out to Marcus. And also you too, know, like for, from entrepreneurs, look at how he presents his information and they're in the results that he's able to ascertain. The only thing I want you to, you guys take away from everyone is the results that you're able to get. Nothing else matters. The reason Yo, the the results, Mark is, yeah, is the most heralded at IU, best results. That's best it. Results. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to LA. <laughs> he's just gonna let everything go. <laughs> I ain't get a chance to talk, man. They silenced the lamb. They silenced the lamb, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, when you moving? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you not talk about you again. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know how this works. Y'all know how this works, man. We gonna close it out like this. We gonna close it out like this, man. Again, reach out to somebody in need. Uh, give back whenever you can. Always check in on somebody. A text can change the trajectory of somebody's life. A phone call can change the trajectory of somebody's life. So please, of course, to do that. Make sure you do that. But also make sure you tap in with yourself. Like I said last week, self inventory is mandatory. It's required. Um, even if you're doing it every other day, just checking on yourself, make sure that you're good. Cause if you're not good for yourself, you can't be good to the world. And so- Are you good? You the happiest I, I'm great, person man. I know, you, you Jada, <laughs> for real. I'm good, man. Like I said, I really am blessed to be alive and here be with y'all. I, I'm blessed to be in this moment. I don't want people to take that for granted, man. I really am Yo, truly like legit. honored to be sitting in these conversations. Like, Yo, this is, it's, this is it's, almost surreal. It's a blessing. A it's, it's a blessing to be a blessing. And yeah. that's why this, this, I think $7,000. Oh, my man. There he goes. Another $500 yeah. added. What that? Hometown hero. Yeah. Ah, man. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and send, send, me, one, showing send me one earner and then take me one person from YouTube and then my person from Red Panda. I got you. Uh, OG, what up? Yeah, everybody's showing love, man. It's incredible. Y'all know how we rock, man. Since day one, we said the information's on us, application's on you, and we're going to stand by that. I'm so happy to see that everybody, especially in our town, shout, shout out to everybody in Greenberg, everybody that's calling and, and saying like they, they invest in and they want to have conversations, talking about up mud counts. It's a different game. It's a different game. And I, I'm happy. I'm happy to be one of the pioneers, especially for this, this community, myself and Rashad. Um, Here's the crazy part. I ain't well. even go to Kelly School of Business. You know how big it is for, for me to have a conversation with Mark? My, my phone is going crazy. My phone looks like the Zoom right now. I Mark, appreciate you. Mark, Mark, Mark Cuban, He's a man. great person. The, our favorite of, billionaire. Yeah, our favorite billionaire. Yeah. He's one of the most giving per- people. Even at IU, he still goes back to IU frequently and gives advice all the time. All yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out to him, yeah. man. So yeah, it's, it's a blessing to be a blessing. And like I said, just to be able to um, you know, start somebody out with some money, hopefully they can put it to work. Let's buy an ETF, get a custodial account for your for your kid, and um, you know we always going to do that, man. That's nothing to even brag about. We never yeah. brag how real we keep it because it's the best secret. We get free inf- we get free information Ooh. every day. Ooh. We give cash apps all the time. Bar. We give, you we said I can't going. review every stock in the market. <laughs> well, we do Talk market Mondays every day. Come on. Talk to him. Nah, man. So you know, it's just that's just part of it, you know. Hey, um, we appreciate our kid. everybody. Our man. kids. We ain't say. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to my son. Come shout on, out to man. Christian. Shout out to Jordan. Shout out to Chase. Shout out to the whole EYO kids. Yeah. Uh-huh. Shout, shout out to Xander. Yeah, Go to Xander. Bed, Go to bed, yeah. baby. Danny D. Danny D. I love you. I love you. She says I don't shout out enough. I love you. 
I was under the weather yesterday, Valentine's Day, and work out the way I wanted to. So I just want to publicly say I love you. And, um, and thank shout, you. Shout out to everybody that's tapping in with a platform. Shout out to 85 South. Ooh, shout out the bros. to shout out to Charlemagne. The bro. Shout out to Joe yeah. Button. Hey, Charlemagne. Shout out to everybody, man. <laughs> shout out to Charlemagne, man. Good dude right there. Hmm. We're gonna bring this back. We're gonna run this part back. <laughs> Weezy We're Schultz. Run this back. Alex, Alex, what up, man? Yeah, horrible decision. Everybody, everybody in the space. Mandy, what's up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh good. Was it good mom's bad decision? Shout yes, out to yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. yes Everybody yes. that's in this space, man. That, that's all of doing our fellow something. content creators. Yeah, man. We love all of them. All of our fellow content creators. Guys, thank you for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. I can't believe we have Mark Cuban.